Hey, it's Brock here from Rock Hill Farms. And right now the wind is gusting between 20 and 30 miles an hour. So there's no way I can make any progress on the Quonset hut. So we're gonna move on to another project. I got an email from a representative of a company called Hyperlight. He said he'd been watching my Quonset hut series and said he thought I could really use a light in this area and he's absolutely right. So we got to talking, they sent me out one of their parking lot lights. It's only uses 300 watts of power, but it puts out like 50,000 lumens. And if you're not real familiar with the lumen scale, like a household light bulb is gonna be like 600 lumens, and we're talking 50,000. It's, the light's about this big, and it's just completely covered in LEDs. And it's actually pretty affordable. So my breaker box is right on the other side of this. I'll be able to come straight out of the box, up the pole and get it set up and then hopefully by the end of this video we'll see how bright it is at night out here i was actually on my way over to get the back hoe and i drove by the artillion front hoe and i thought i'm not digging some giant crater i just need a little hole set the post down put a couple bags of quick creed in so i think i'll just see how the front hoe bucket does the only concern with this or with the back hoe is we're right up against the building so I don't want to run into the building again, but let's see how it does. about here I've got a hole about two foot deep two foot wide I think I'll just move this over a couple panels and put it here because that's not a very precise digging instrument and I didn't want to get too close because this buried conduit from right here angles this way so it's probably setting right here and obviously I don't want to damage that so I'm going to space that pole out just a little bit with a 2x6 on here. I think after raking a little debris out of here, we'll be ready to put a pole up. Let's go look at the light. Here it is, the Hyperlight 300 watt 45,000 lumen parking lot light. I think this thing is going to be super bright. So let's open it up and see what we've got here. I've already looked in the instructions to make sure I had everything here that I needed and there are three mounting options. The one I have here slips over a pole and then tightens down with these big uh, allen head bolts. So it said up to a two and a half inch pole. I took this with me to buy my pipe that's going to hold this up and I bought a two and a half inch and I slid it over and it did fit just fine. The next thing we have in here are a blue cap and a red cap with these electrical plugs on it. 
One of them is a photo cell for the dust to dawn feature if you only want it to come on at night. And I think that's what I will be using. But if you don't want it to only come on at night, you put this cap on and that just kind of bypasses the dust to dawn feature. And then we've got our actual light. So nice and simple, not a lot of parts to mess with. Look at all those LEDs. That looks like 150 LEDs. So if you think about the LED that comes in a regular flashlight, you've got 150 of them here. And I don't know if those are equivalent to the LED in a flashlight or if these are bigger or smaller or what the difference is. But then you've got mounting bolts right here. So you can put this on your pole, swivel it down, and then this just slides in right here and bolts down. Very easy setup. For maintenance on this, you've got two clips right here that pop open and you can access the internals. I don't see where I'm going to have a need to really do that much, but it's good to know you have that access. My experience with LEDs is they last forever. So that's kind of what draws me to this is it's low maintenance. Well, it looks like the photo cell will just push in here and twist. No point in putting it in until we're ready, but very simple. And that's all there is to this. I'm going to go ahead and take this outside with me, get the pole set, get this mounted on the pole, and then we'll get the light put up. Now that I'm done digging that, I can see it would have been worth it to put the backhoe on, but we got the job done. Now I think either way I was going to end up finishing this part right up against the building by hand, just to avoid hitting it. but I could have got closer with the backhoe. Everywhere there's a screw here is supported behind it by two by sixes. So we can screw right next to those and we should be pretty solid here. And this just gives me more area to anchor the pole to and spaces it out off the ribs. My plan has been to anchor the pipe to the wall more than in the ground and I was using wood screws to bolt this on. I realized I've got this gutter that hangs out farther. I actually need four inches out, not just an inch and a half. So I'm switching over. I've got these larger lag bolts and I'm going to lag bolt this two by to the wall. I'll lag bolt another two by to it. Another thing that if you've been following along, you already know is I'm not a how-to channel. I just show you what I'm doing. There's a better way to do everything I'm doing. I appreciate you telling me about it, but I just do the best I can and I try to get a lot done. What I bought to hold the pipe up is these clamps right here. They have a single bolt hole and it's made for pipe this size. And I bought three of those and I bought the lag bolts to hold those on. But I actually think after I get this up, I'm gonna add more of the U-shaped ones over it because I want this to be as solid as I can. That's why after I screwed that down, I added the lag bolts and I put lag bolts and screws into this second board. And I think I'm going to dig this out a little bit deeper to get more concrete on it. My plan was I was going to put the post up, then climb up there and put the light on top of it. That seems like a bad plan now that I think about it because I've got a 15 foot pole that's going to be a couple foot in the ground. It'll be 13 foot up in the air. 
it's really windy there's no point in that so I'm gonna get the light completely put together put it on the pole and then stand the pole up I've already stood the pole up once to test it it's not gonna be that heavy and this lights not very heavy so to get this set up the way I'm doing it because the way this comes oriented would be to stand it straight up and down. I want mine more flattened off. So it's got a cap right here you take off with a screwdriver. Then behind it, there's an Allen head bolt. It takes a 10 millimeter Allen. You take this bolt loose, then you can angle it however you want. It was a 10 millimeter for the other bolts. This is a six millimeter hex key two bolts right here. This wire goes through your pole mount piece and this mounts right here. So I'll go ahead and get that mounted. Next, you slide your wire into here and put this back together. This design is for your wiring to run inside of the pole, which is probably the best way to do it. But I'm actually gonna run my wiring on the outside of the pole and I've already bought conduit to do that with. So, I'm going to drill an exit hole right here for the wire and then I'm going to waterproof my electrical connections outside of this piece. Like I said earlier in the video, I don't make how-to videos, I just show you what I do. If you're going to buy a light like this, you should probably run the electrical through the post like it's designed to. But what I am doing is I drill the hole through the side right here. I'm going to silicone that hole full. I've zip tied the wire on here. And then I'm going to wrap that with electrical tape as well so it can't move and it'll be secure there. Then I'm going to do a waterproof connection out here. The, the connector I decided to use uses set screws to clamp down on one wire from this side and one from this side. So it's white, white, black, black, and green, green. Then I'll slide this heat shrink tubing over it and we're going to hit that with a heat gun and we'll be in good shape. This setup is actually designed for underground burial, but I think it should work pretty well on this, too. Before I put this on a pole and got it way up in the air, I wanted to make sure I'd made my electrical connections correctly and it was going to work. So we've hooked the wire off of this into a live circuit and go ahead and turn it on. Wow. That's a lot of light. I mean, seriously, there are 20 fixtures on in here already and this is just blinding. Go ahead and shut it back off. So clearly it's going to work. We're ready to go put this on the pole. I'm just about out of rebar, but I found a couple of pieces. I angled those into the ground, just a few inches from the pipe. Maybe that'll help keep it from cracking. The hose. A little thicker than last time, so spray it in like a few seconds at a time and check it. Sometimes like one little cup full of water, it makes it too runny. Dump it in there now. Go for that on the next one. Okay. You'll see if that's the right amount of water.
One thing I didn't mention is that I drilled holes into this pipe so that this runnier concrete mix could hopefully run down into the pipe a little bit. Now right here, we're above the original ground level, but I had a thick rock layer here, probably a foot thick. So we're still below that. So I don't care what the top of this looks like because I'm gonna push a ton more rock up over top of it. We might have rock all the way up here before we're done because this is a hill and I want to flatten it out a little bit by raising more rock over here. Now I just need to go inside and make the electrical connections. I'm not going to record that part because I'm not an electrician, not an expert on wiring, but it's pretty simple really. You got three wires and we're going to run it into the box, put it on its own circuit and it's going to be dark in about 30 minutes to an hour and hopefully we can kick this on and show you how bright it is out here. If you look right over here, you'll see a light. See that little orangish thing? That is a yard light on an electric pole that we pay the electric company a monthly fee to have there. It is so dim and dull in comparison to this. Like, you come out the back door, you get kind of like this weird, cringy kind of nightlight glow. This thing's so bright, you really don't want to look directly at it. And it's going to light up all the way between both of these buildings, most of the way to the house, and I'll actually be able to work at night on the Quonset hut, it's so bright. So if you're interested in a high quality, commercial grade outdoor light at a reasonable price, check the links in the description for a hyper light. I appreciate you taking time to watch the video. You'll see more of our videos on the screen right here, and I'll see you next time.